Hey guys, it's Aaron, and today I want to talk about component modeling or modeling with components and how using components properly can mean you do half or maybe even one quarter of the work. So this is not a new concept. This is something we talk about regularly, but it bears repeating because we see questions on this fairly regularly. Um, sometimes I'm gonna, I'm gonna say some crazy stuff right now, but some people don't understand why to even use groups and don't know the difference in groups or components. <sighs> Can you believe that? So I wanted to just make a quick video to show the advantages of using components and copies of components when you're modeling a single thing. So this gets away a little bit from like, like if there's a repeating element in your model, right? If there's, there's the same thing as in your model a dozen different times and you model as a component once, that way if you change the first one, they all change. That's still a thing, that's valid. But what I wanna look at here is modeling a single thing, but only modeling a portion of it and having it repeat. All right, so in here, brand new clean model. So what I wanna, I just wanna model a quick and, and simple table. So how I would probably go about this if I wasn't thinking about it, I'd come in here, I'd model the tabletop, I'd give it some depth, um, this is an ugly table, uh, but that's okay. I'm gonna move it up, however far it's supposed to be up, and then maybe I come in here and I'll do something like, uh, you know, draw some legs, and then we'll bring that down, and then maybe grab all that and, you know, copy it over to here, and then take those and copy it over to here, something along those lines. I would do, those would be the general steps. Now, I cut some corners, right? I didn't use exact measurements when I moved the legs around. I didn't componentize or group anything. It's all raw geometry. So there's some dumb stuff there. But the dumbest part of what I did was, if you look at this, if I, if I chop this table in half right down the middle, it's the same on either side. So let's talk about how we could make that with components. So I'm gonna start by drawing half the table. And then uh, you know, I'll come in here and I will give it, you know, actually before I give it depth, let's let's say I wanna round off the corners, okay? So that might be, so I'm gonna draw an arc from here to here, double click, and then I'm gonna come up, double click right here. That gives me rounded corners. And I'm gonna take that, push, pull it to give it a little bit of depth. And now at this point, I'm gonna grab it and make it a component. And I will call it half table. Now, now my half table exists. So what do I need to do now? Well, I need to put legs on it, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and lift it up here and I gotta get my legs on under here. But before I do that, I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna make a copy. I'm gonna put my copy right over here. And this way, uh, when I make the legs on here, they'll show up over here too. Now, obviously, first things first, it was really obvious when I copied it over here that I copied it in the wrong spot, right? Because my curve's on here. But if I had done this same thing with a rectangle, I'd taken that rectangle and copied it over here, I wouldn't have been able to necessarily tell the difference, right? If I come straight over, the two halves look the same. So an important thing to note when you're modeling like this is how you get this other piece over here. So I could take this, now I could scale it, I could rotate it, I could figure out a different way to do it, but I wanna tell you the easiest way is using the flip command. So if I grab this, I say flip, I hit my modifier key, down here at the bottom is gonna tell you modify, modifier to make a copy. I'm gonna copy right over to its face. Now what that did was it inverted the whole thing. So that means when I come in here and I go, okay, I'm gonna come in here, and I'll make round legs here. I'll inference this circle right here. There we go. I'm gonna do that and then pull that down to, to the base here like that. See how both sides got them on the same spot? Again, I'm making, I'm, I'm working smarter, not harder. I'm gonna copy that over here. And as soon as I do that, as soon as I copy this leg over, it's gonna show up here. My four legs are done at that point. Quick and easy. Now, this is a great way uh, people call this out fairly regularly to me <laughs> while I'm modeling. People point out, oh, you 
when you uh, uh, model that building, you're modeling both halves of it and a lot of it's the same. That's absolutely true. And uh, this is what I should be doing. Split something that's symmetric down the middle, model both halves, even if they're not perfectly symmetrical, right? Maybe there's some features on this table that are only on one side. Maybe there's a keyboard tray. I don't know, I'm making up stuff. Probably not on a table like this. This looks like a play table for a kid. But if 90% of, of something is symmetrical, go ahead and make your component, make your changes, and then, you know, halfway in, make this unique, and then make those other changes that don't have to be the same. With something like a table, even a rectangular table, uh, I could go a little bit further with it, right? So I could come in here, I could make my corner of a table, give that a little bit of depth, and then I'll grab that, make that into a component. I'm gonna call this a quarter table. And I'll do the same thing. I will select it. I will say, mirror that. Hit my modifier key to make a copy. Mirror this over here. Then select both of them and then mirror again. Again, modifier key to make a copy. Bring that over to the edge there. And now I have four pieces of my table. Now, if I come over here, okay, let's go under here. Let's add, go into one copy, right? Just one of them. And then I'm gonna put in my leg. Look, even less work than what I did over here. I only had to make one leg. And again, I'm making this super simple, you guys, but I could put as much detail as I want in here. It would all be the same, uh, and it would only have to be done once. Now, here's the thing. I got a big X in my table. That's not ideal, right? I'm looking at my table. I don't, I don't want to have that. That's simple enough. I'm going to double click on this one. And here's the thing that I run into a lot is when I'm editing this one piece, it's hard to necessarily see everything because all the other copies are here. So if I go over to view and I go to component edit and I hide similar components, not rest of model, rest of model is going to get rid of all those other tables, right? So if I go to component and say hide similar components, it hides just everything but the one I'm working on. Now, let's clean this up so it works good as a component. I'm going to go ahead and erase this line right here. Erasing that line just erases these edges. I don't need those. They're, they'll always be covered up. And then I'm going to use the hide modifier with the erase. So I come down here, shift is going to toggle hide shift. I'm going to drag it across both these edges, both these edges. Now, when I click to come out of here, I have what looks like, oops, I missed one. I missed two. I'm going to do that again. Shift, get rid of that little one. And then over here, we're going to have one more. Get rid of hint two. All right, there we go. Now we have what looks like one solid piece. And again, because it's still a component, I could come in and I could do something like, um, I don't know, maybe I want to grab this and slide it over this way because I'm making it some cool looking table thing. I can make that change once and because it's a component, it's going to go ahead and do that on all four sides. Now there's downsides to this, of course, right? So if I'm trying to make this a solid because I want to send a miniature version of my 3D printer, these four pieces will have to get consolidated into one piece. If I'm trying to come up with a cut list. How big is this piece? Well, this isn't a piece, it's four separate pieces. So there's going to be a point at which you might want to go grab all of this and then we'll just make a copy of it over here. Here's how I'd go about that. With all four pieces selected, right click, make group. Now go into that group, select my four uh, component copies and explode. With that, now this is one piece and I could come in, I could do some, I could do some additional cleanup, right? Cause I did, I did break that. So I could say, show me my hidden geometry, get rid of that geometry altogether, tie that all together. I could do a select, get rid of my little line there, come around this side, little line there. There we go. And with that, now it's one piece. So if I did want to make this a solid to print it, I could. If I wanted to check, you know, what is the length of this piece of material? It is one piece now. So I could, in theory, get a cut list with a with an extension or something like that. But with that, uh, I did model that table, one quarter of the work. And again, it's simple, but if I had fancy legs and, you know, uh, some follow me skirt or something like that around the outside, uh, it would all be able to be done one quarter of the work to get the same final table at the end. 
So this is some of the true power of components. Like I said, there is other things. If I'm doing a, you know, a model of an exterior and I have a traffic cone and I put a bunch of traffic cones on there, I can make them components that way if I want to change the color, height, size, whatever. I just have to do it once. So that is definitely a, a powerful piece of components, but people don't always think about using them to model a single thing. So if you ever have repeating geometry, look at your model beforehand and save yourself some time by modeling it fewer times and using components to duplicate. Uh, yeah, that's what we got today. If you like that, if you learned anything, or if you just enjoyed the video, go ahead and click like down below. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe. We create several videos each and every week around here and you'll be notified of all of them if you subscribe. Most importantly though, please leave us a comment down below. Let me know what you think of this process. Do you use this? Do you use something like this? Did I miss something? Or can you think of something else that you think would make a good video on our channel? We like making these videos a lot. We like them even more when they're showing something you wanna see. Thank you.